Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video of our JavaScript series. I hope you are enjoying it. Now we're going to design another feature for the website. It has nothing to do with the past one. This is totally new, a fresh one. So on the top and right hand side corner, you can see there is a sign up for free button here. But there is going to be another button if the user is already signed up. There should be or logged in. There should be a button of sign out there instead of having a button for sign up. So we're going to be designing a simple feature for this application, which is show user a sign out button if he's authenticated, otherwise show him option to log in. Now, right now, we don't have skills to actually show a button or not to show a button. We will be displaying all the information in console log, but it will still give you enough of idea that how or relatively how that might be accomplished there. So there are a few ways how we can do that. So for that, let's go ahead and declare a variable. I'm going to call this one as authenticated. This is a usual variable name being used. So again, feel free to use even Superman if you like, if that makes sense to you. And we're going to say that the authentication is actually true. So user is already authenticated means he is logged in or signed up. Now let's just go ahead and write a simple if and else conditional loop for that. So I'm going to simply go ahead and say if authenticated, then I'm going to simply say a simple log message that says, uh, let's just say he's signed in. So we're going to say show sign out button. Otherwise, we're going to provide a user a message which is going to say that uh, let's just do a log here as well, which is going to say show login option. So now let's just check that what is happening. And this is a relatively bit of a new code that you are seeing that I'm not writing or comparing anything here. Let me just go ahead and run this first. So we see the show sign out button. So that button is being shown to the user. Now, sometimes user says that or new beginner says that, hey, in the if block, I need to compare it with something. Uh, so there should be like one less than two or something like that. But what you are forgetting here that the whole thing should finally evaluate to something true and false. That's the whole idea. So if you already have a variable which is evaluated as true, you can go ahead and use that directly instead of relying on comparing with something and then getting the same result. So for example, if I just turn this flag as false and I try to run this one again, now it says a show login option instead of the sign out. So this is a very common scenario, common practice, but there is another alternative of how people like to do this. So I'm going to comment out this code so that you can have it and I'm going to show you an easier way not easier, but there are some syntactic sugar. I would prefer if I'm teaching to the beginners, I would definitely 100% prefer this method. But there is a syntactic sugar way of having all of this. So in that case, first, I would like to bring you on to an example so that you can read the documentation along with me. So these are known as operators. So if you go up at the top here, the page is actually combined for two things, expressions and operators. We're not going to be talking about expressions as of now, probably later. So let's go and scroll it a little bit. Now here from the incrementer and decrementer, it starts operator. And there are lots of operators that we are seeing. Some of them we have already seen like type of, which was a strange one word given just before any value and gets the type of that value. Similarly, we have seen the plus, minus, division, uh, remainder, exponential. So there are fairly easy ones. We already uh, got a small look on them. And there are so, so many others as well, which we didn't took a look. Something like uh, less than greater than we have seen, but uh, something like double equals, triple equals. We haven't actually touched them. If we're going to scroll it a little bit and keep on scrolling, and there are a lot of strange things here, so don't worry too much. You're going to see these conditional ternary operators. So this is the one that we are talking in here. So how it works, let's first click on this and read from the documentation so that we can understand how it works. Now notice here, uh, there's a whole lot going on. Let's just not worry about them. First and foremost, it says is member. Then we put up a question mark, then some value and then a colon sign and then some value. So the whole idea is that this is the condition part which needs to be evaluated. And based on that, you can put a question mark, then some value to be executed and then some uh, value after the colon. So this is the if part and this is the else part. How we're going to achieve or use this same knowledge in bringing up to our file, it's actually super simple. We can directly go ahead and say authenticated. Now authenticated is going to have, uh, this is our condition which is getting evaluated. Then we can put up a question mark and we can put up a colon. The question mark is going to have a simple uh, log here, which is going to say something like this. And if he's authenticated, this is true part. So we have to show a sign up button. So we're going to simply say uh, sign out button, my bad, sign out button. 
And there we go. We're going to remove this colon for a moment so that we everything moves back on the same line. And here we're going to do a simple console.log. And here we're going to simply say a simple login button. Okay, that makes sense. So again, this is the condition that is being evaluated. This is the true part and this is the false part. Let's go ahead and run this code. Let's go ahead and run this and we see a login here because the value is a false right now. So after the colon, we run the else part here. Let's go ahead and turn the flag as a true. There we go. Run it one more time just for the formality sake. And there we go. Sign out button is being printed. So this code is almost exactly like it here. But this is not an ideal way I would like to use it. I would like to use it a bit more better place. But yes, as of now, this is working fine. And you get this. Now, this is a very shorthand notation. And there is no difference between this code and this code. Feel free to use whatever you like, whatever you are comfortable with. But yes, just to give you a fact that there's a whole lot that's going on. We are going to study a whole lot of them. Eventually, you're going to understand a lot of these ones. So we have comma operators, we have assignment operators, conditionals, binary logics, bitwise. And if you remember, we have already seen these logical ends and all, which are very powerful. But we have a whole lot of them. And of course, we cannot talk about all of them, but I'm going to try my best to give you a brief look on at least some of them which are majorly used along with these similar use case scenarios. So that was it about your ternary operators in JavaScript, which are pretty fun and very compact. I hope you have already hit that subscribe. Let's catch up in next one.